Welcome to TRS Clips. This was created so that you can go on a binge watching experience every time you want to enhance your brain with information. Happiness through curiosity on the Ranveer Show. I'd love for you to give the Hindu narrative on what Nagas are slash were uh, based on whatever you know about it or whatever you've learned over your journey. Okay. Now, my perspective of Nagas, it's, uh, it's, can be quite different and it has other meanings as well. We all know Nagas. Most Hindus know Nagas. It's the word we use for snake. Okay. But how are Nagas mentioned in ancient texts? Right? They were not snakes. They were not humans as well. Right? They were a completely different species that looked like humanoids, right? That they looked human but they could also shape shift. Oh, really? Yes. They could change into whatever they wanted to be. And they never lived on the ground. They always lived in subterranean levels, meaning they only lived underground. Sometimes, this is why, you know, the Nagas belong in the Patala Loka. You know this, yeah. right? Don't you? And, and also when uh, Bhim was, uh, I mean, when the Kauravas tried killing Bhim in the Mahabharata, they throw him in a lake and at the bottom of the lake, he finds a world of the Nagas yes. who actually help him survive. I mean, that's the story. Yes. But go on. Yes. But if you go to Mahabalipuram, you can actually see Nagas changing their shape from snakes to human. You can see them like kind of coming out of the underground level and then like becoming almost human, right? And all the other people are just like looking at the transformation. You can see carvings like that. So, in modern terms, right, Nagas are reptilians, right? They're an alien species that are able to change color, change shape. They can look like human if they wanted to, and they live in a different dimension. They, they kind of lived underground or something. My question is about what you saw abroad. You said that Peru had a version of the Nagas. What's up? It's a little bit of a strange theory, but, but Nagas are actually found everywhere. Okay, you can go to the U.S. and you can see a great serpent mound in Ohio. This is a giant snake that you can only see from the air. And um, if you go to Peru, these are called Amaru, which basically is a Sanskrit word. Amar means an immortal god, right? Right in Sanskrit. If you go to Colombia, you can see the Nagas guarding. You can, uh, if you go to Colombia, there's a place called San Agustin, and then you can see a lingam guarded by a Naga. Like a shivling. Yes. Yes. I have been reading a lot about shivlings lately, and what I figured is that that construction, this is yogic philosophy, supposed to be able to capture a lot of energy. What does that mean? For the ones who are meant to understand, they'll understand. For the ones who are not meant to understand, they'll say, what do you mean by energy, bro? Yeah. What, what is this vague term? Now go on. Yeah, so you have this Naga culture. Of course, you can see this in Mayans. Uh, you can see this in South America. Then you can, um, in Israel, Nagas mm -hmm. are called, yeah, Nagas are called Nakash. Basically, the same terminology. And uh, you know this, right? Snakes are called serpents in the Bible. They're called serpents. And Jews called it seraph. And Hindus call it sarpa. This is still the word we use in South. We call it sarpam, meaning naga. So it's not just that we all worship the nagas, but it's even the names are similar. Nagas are called nakash, and sarpas are called serpents or seraphs. Mm. In all over the world. So it, if you look at the entire world and if you look at all the ancient civilizations, they will tell you one story. It's a common story. Very, very similar common story. Okay. That humans, the very first rulers came from Nagas. As in the first rulers over human beings were actually Nagas. If you go to Cambodia, for example, the very first ruler is a Naga ruler. 
is not completely human, right? And the Nagas, they come from somewhere and they take over the planet and they start building civilization. So they were the original ancestors, right? Of humans? In a, in a way. They, they come from somewhere. It's a very hard uh, thing to explain. I could explain it to you. In no. a, in a, yeah, yeah, I could explain it to you in a way that let's say a race of reptilians, right? They go to a planet and they, and they find a bunch of cavemen there, right? So they, so they land on this planet. Now, what will the cavemen think? These are gods. Exactly. So what we actually see from various accounts is basically that the original queens and kings of almost any civilization are Naga kings. Okay? And they, and they have these weird places. For example, in Cambodia, they have this. In South India and in Tamil Nadu, they have at the top of the mountain, they have a place called uh, Kullar Caves, okay? And, of course, archaeological explanation is different. They say they are dolmens. They're, you have seen the dolmens. There's a small little stone huts up the top of a hill. We can see this everywhere, okay? These are called Kullar Caves in Tamil Nadu. There is a place called uh, Valiampara in Tamil Nadu. There is a place called Kire uh, Benakal in Karnataka. And it takes you maybe like two hours uh, to go up a mountain, okay? It's, nobody goes there. Even the villagers, unless you pay them good money, they won't take you there because the mountains have uh, bears, right? So they won't take you there. But if you go there, you'll see stone huts. Archaeologists will say, no, no, you know, people lived there like 3,000 years ago, right? These are Stone Age people who lived there. And these huts, you cannot even go into these huts, by the way. Like, it's very hard for you to crouch into these huts, by the way. But if you ask the villagers, they'll tell you one story and one story only. That there were beings that came from the sky. And these beings were very short. And they came from the sky. And they started to civilize human beings. The human beings were initially afraid of them, okay? But they taught all the construction technology, all the, you know, the, how to make fire, for example. They taught all their stuff. Like, we don't know what they were doing. And then after a particular point of time, like maybe after building all the fantastic structures, they're just gone. So, they're, so they just vanish. Now, it's very hard, right? And you can see me getting local accounts, right? So I will go to these places, I will have my camera, and I will, because people always say, oh, no, Praveen Mohan is just, he's just making up stories. So I'll actually have it on camera saying that, okay, tell me what you think, right? And they will tell us, oh, look, no, no, this is what archaeologists are saying. Humans were building these stone huts on the top of the hill. We cannot do this today. How, how do we carry up? Nobody goes there even today, okay? And the villagers completely dismiss, you know, mainstream theory, but they will say there is a completely different species or race that lived there, and we used to be afraid of them. They could call us, they could, you know, select people, but we were not allowed to go up the mountain, right? And you can see the same story everywhere. And now if you walk on that, on the top of the mountain, okay, between the mountain and underneath, there are villages, you know, at the bottom. And between the two, there is a temple. Usually there is a temple. And in that temple, there are Nagas. And the locals still go to those temples and they worship them. By all accounts, those species, which are like the, the weird, you know, alien species, if you will, those are the Nagas, right? So 20 years ago, maybe we, thought this is all just mythology. But now we are able to understand this really well, I think, because 
you know, because Elon Musk is going, trying to go to Mars or, you know, very soon, right, within 50 years, we're going to go to a different planet. The point that I was making was that what Nagas are, if you will, right, they're not snakes, right, that's clear. They're also not human, but they're a completely different species or a race. All ancient civilizations mention them. They mention them as the, the very first queen or king of their civilization. Many people argue that this, if you go to Nagaland, they'll probably confirm your theory. We descended from the Nagas. If you go to Sri Lanka, they maintain that they descended from the Nagas. Um, most people don't know this. Most people think that Cambodia. Cambodia has a lot of Hindu temples. You know this? Yeah. Cambodia has Angkor Wat. A lot of Hindu temples are there. When do you think Hinduism entered Cambodia? Probably 2,000, 3,000 years ago. That's the point. The point is many people think, it's, and that's a good guess. This is how you're supposed to actually think about it. While if you talk to normal people, people think, you know, it went from India to Cambodia maybe a thousand years ago, right? But that's not true because the very first king and queen mentioned, the very first ruler of Cambodia is called Soma. That's a Hindu name, right? This is not a man. This is a woman. And the woman descends from the Nagas. Okay? And she marries a human called Kaundinya. And we can, of course, dismiss this as a pure mythology, right? Oh, a Naga, you know, like starting a civilization in Cambodia, right? But if you go to a place called Angkor Bore, nobody goes to this place. This is like two hours away from the capital of uh, Cambodia. Nobody goes there. It's completely in ruins. It's kind of a rough, dark place. But you can see ruins that are 2,000 years old. Some are even saying that it's like 3,000, 4,000 years old, okay? And we can see evidences of Hinduism, and you will see Nagas all over the place, as though na the Nagas founded that empire. And we can see this everywhere. We can see this in remote parts of India. We can see it in huge temples. And I have a theory about this, right? So this is a, a very interesting theory that I that I I like to think about. So let's say you have a photo album, right, of the last 50 years, right? This this album, let's say, let's say I have it. Let's say I have a photo album of all my family members, right? So this is I'm not there 50 years ago, obviously. So I, I wouldn't be in some of the pictures. So how do you find out who is the oldest person in the family? By the looks. What else would you would you would you use? Just from the photos. Just from the photos. How would you find out who is the oldest? If you had hundred pictures, how would you find out who is the oldest thing? Or who is the oldest person in the in the family? Maybe carbon date all the photographs and then see which. No, one the wrote. person, right? So who was? Let's say there are like a couple of grandmas and grandpas, blah blah blah. So the oldest person should appear in all the pictures. Mm. right that's the way to find out mm. who's the oldest because I won't be there like 50 years ago right and maybe some other person may not be there because he's born after that time but the person who's in all the pictures must be the oldest mm. right this is this is this should be common sense this is how we find out yeah. oh who's the who's the oldest employee in your organization he's the person who's in all the pictures Right? Because in some pictures, the new employees are not there, blah, blah, blah. Right? This is the scenario with the Nagas. You can find Nagas in all the temples. You may not find other gods. You may not find, for example, Kartikeya. You may not find Ganesha. But the Nagas are, by design, they are there in every temple. Not only in temples, but no matter where you go, the Nagas are carved in their ancient structures.
why aren't uh, historians thinking more about this like why has this come up on a podcast you know why isn't it there in the mainstream because it's borderline fantasy stuff right nobody nobody unless you have a crazy guy like me coming out and saying nagas may have created the world's civilization it's a ridiculous thought process right there there was a guy called david ike have you heard of him there was a guy called david ike and there's he's still there by the way and he's the one who said there are reptilians controlling humans now you know what people did people made him into a laughing stock of of his time actually and now he's banned from from youtube and facebook and everywhere right but when you put forth a radical thought process and i'm merely entertaining that right i i would like to think that too if some in some temple shiva is not there some temple in Vishnu is not there. Ganesha is not there. But if in all the temples and all the ancient sites, Nagas are there, then Nagas are the oldest gods around the world. If you enjoyed this video, just know that we've got a bunch of curated playlists on this channel just for you. So you don't have to consume every single subject that we cover on TRS, but you do have to consume the playlists that you enjoy the most. That's what I nudge you towards.